Is there an awesome section in another song, TV show, movie, or audiobook that you would love to sample in your next song? But you're wondering, is that legal? Will I get in trouble if I sample from other people's work in my music? Hey, I'm Reagan Ram with OrpheusAudioAcademy.com, helping you make better music and grow your fan base online. And I don't know about you, but I really love when songs utilize samples from other works. I think that's really cool. One of my favorite artists that does this is Pogo. Pretty much all his songs are made using samples from various movies and TV shows, such as Home Alone, Lord of the Rings, and many more. But that's really cool, sampling from other works. But how do you get away with that? Is that legal? Do you have to pay a lot of money to get the rights to use those samples? Well, I actually asked all these questions of an actual intellectual property and patent lawyer named Adam Woodward. And you can see our interview here now where he answers all of these questions around sampling. So this is a complicated question in copyright uh, because what you're doing, what you're doing is what's called a transformative use. So if you're sampling, if you're just sampling one song to use in another song, that's a really straightforward licensing transaction. And there's a great tool called Tracklib out there to help people who are sampling their music get licenses. But that's going from one form of expression to the same form of expression, song right. to song. Transformative use, when you're taking a... Uh, uh, a movie or other line of dialogue and converting it into a song. You're essentially taking one kind of expression and turning it into another. That gets in more involved in fair use. Sampling songs to use in other songs is straightforward commercial use, especially if you sell the music. So you have to pay a small licensing fee and then agree to a royalty distribution uh, unless your use is so tiny, like think one or two seconds or something that it, it's hard for anyone to argue that it's infringing. Using movie dialogue and other things like that is a lot is a lot more fact dependent. But in a nutshell, the concept of copyright fair use is that there are certain forms of copying that don't negatively affect the economic market for or the commercial interests of the uh, original creator, such that they're an exception to the general copyright rule. Remember I told you intellectual property is oriented towards commerce and, and business? Right. So inevitably, when you're evaluating any kind of intellectual property dispute, the question of, in this use of my idea, in this taking of my idea, are you gaining an unfair economic benefit at my expense? Are you harming the market for what I'm trying to do hmm. by taking my patent, copyright, trademark, whatever? And fair use comes about because there's a class of copying that we say, well, yes, this is technically copy, but it's an exception to copyright infringement because it's fair use. So the classical examples of fair use are educational, news, commentary, parody. Mm. That's how people like on that. YouTube can get away with you know, doing commentary on different films exactly. and showing clips. Exactly, reaction to videos. Right. I'm reacting uh -huh. to you. I'm taking your expression and I'm commenting on it. I'm parodying it. I'm reporting on it. And therefore, even though I'm sampling significant segments of your copyrighted work, I'm not an infringer because it's fair use. And it's, you know, transformative use is kind of is similar to, to fair use. It's where you're taking something you're like, I've so transformed this from its original standpoint that it's no longer really copyright. You know, it, it's not the same thing. And no one who's buying my work or using my work is doing so as a cheaper way or a different way to get your work. Right. And that's kind of the key thing, you know. So, so it's not like you're making a bootleg copy of a, of the movie, and someone's going to go listen to your song instead of watching the movie. Right, right. So it's it's parody, it's transformative use. So odds are, I and I'll double check this for you, but odds are he probably doesn't have to seek copyright clearance for any of. That's what I was works. wondering because he doesn't talk at all about it. He even put together a movie talking about how he does it, but he didn't say anything about getting the rights to use the clips from the movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as with any uh, as with, as with any lawyer, like, you know, let, let's be careful before we go mm -hmm. and say, yeah, go ahead. Copy away. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to make sure says, we can just rip. <laughs> <I everyone's> said. <laughs> stuff. But transformative use is one of those particular complexities of copyright law, because 
it's like copying, but it's not because we're going from one medium, one form, one expression to another, and the markets are not the same. Right. I don't buy as I don't buy one of Pogo's songs because I really want to watch Jungle Book, you know, mm -hmm. or you know, the Princess and the Frog. I buy his song because I, I'm interested in music, not movies, but I think it's cool what he's doing. So this case is literally hot off the presses from about three weeks ago, which is basically yesterday in legal terms. <laughs> August 24th, the second district court of appeals brought us a, a fresh and a revivication, a reminder of what transformative use in the context of copyright really is. A transformative use like parody, like uh, educational news commentary. These are all the various branches of fair use. Uh, transformative use is using a work in a different form for a different purpose uh, than the original. So the name okay. of the case, the name of the case, you should you can look it up and read it for yourself, is the Andy Warhol Foundation for Visual Arts Incorporated. Andy Warhol Foundation for Visual Arts versus Goldsmith. And if you type in Andy Warhol v. Goldsmith, you'll get the same. You'll, you'll find the case. But essentially, it came down to print illustration of a famous musician, print. Um, they weren't sufficiently transformative to support a fair use defense. But, you know, this is good news because they almost made it. And here we are. Okay. Interesting. So the original photo here on the left was created by a photographer, I believe it's Linda Goldsmith. Miss Goldsmith created this portrait, this photo of Prince. Later on, Andy Warhol, being so impressed with Prince's music and the painting, went and created the image on the right, and then went about selling it. Andy Warhol passed away. His estate, his foundation, owns the rights to this copy, to this image on the right, and they were using it and selling it selling the prints. Uh, Ms. Goldsmith said, hey, that's my work. You can't do that. Um, and they said, no, 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 this is new. We, 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 it's a parody. It's, it's a transformative use. We, not a parody, but you know, we, we're trying to do something mm -hmm. different, something artistic. And the case has a lot of interesting language. It's not, it's not just legalese for lawyers. It's a good case to read because it kind of goes through for the artist describing what is transformative you know it, it's the it's the purpose of the work it's the um idea the original market for the work and one of the things that weighed against andy warhol here andy warhol's foundation is the fact that the market for prints of photographs and the market for prints of art created from photographs are very similar right um i might buy if i really like prints I might buy a copy of Miss Goldsmith's photograph. I may also take the slightly more artistic version and buy Andy Warhol. But because I like prints and I want to hang him on my wall, and these works are close enough so, yeah. that one could be said to affect the market for the other. So it'd be more, this would kind of be, you know, more congruent to take sampling someone else's song and using it in your song versus taking audio from a TV show, a movie, and putting that into your exactly. music. Exactly. Exactly. Those are qualitatively different things. Um, when you transform the use, you're like, I'm taking a creative expression used or sold for one reason, and I'm incorporating it into a new work used and sold for a typically different reason. All right. So, well, that's um, really encouraging. Yeah. Yeah. So transformative use is the name of the game. And as you can see here, epic fail <laughs> and so <laughs> there was a lot of disgorgement of profits a lot that andy warhol had to pay although the case is not actually fully resolved until they get word from the supreme court that they deny certiorari where the supreme court says they don't want they're not going to take the case so this is still pending but uh i haven't checked to see if the supreme court has said we're not going to take it if the supreme court says no then the ruling stands and they're gonna have to shell out the money hmm. interesting so yeah, so that's an important thing, but that's encouraging because there was this took appellate review. This wasn't an issue that was resolved by a trial court. It had to go up to the big wigs, right? Because yeah, so, it was such a close call. It was right, such so a close if, call. If this is close, then you know you're pretty safe as a music artist sampling exactly, from movies exactly. and TV shows. 
they awesome. almost got they almost got it but the purpose of the work was substantially similar um and so no transformative use so there you have it once okay. again disclaimer i recommend you should always seek the advice and mm -hmm. consult with yeah, an gotta, attorney <laughs> gotta keep yourself safe yeah, <laughs> yeah always consult with an attorney yeah. about issues where it's borderline like this so in conclusion so long as you're not sampling from other songs you're pretty much in the clear because if you sample from a movie a tv show or something and you're using that in your song, that's considered a transformative work. And so it's different enough that you're not competing, right? No one is gonna go and listen to your song instead of going and watching the movie, right? The different audiences, they have different things. So you can get away with sampling a ton of different things. Now, if you do wanna go and sample from other songs, that's where you can use something like tracklib.com, which I'll have linked in the description below. Now, if you have other legal questions surrounding your music, such as how to legally upload covers, do you need a copyright? And what about getting a trademark for your band name and logos? Then I did a much longer interview with Adam that you can also check out. It's playing on the screen right now. That covers everything you might want to know about the legal side of your music. Or if you don't want to check that out, you can also grab my free music legal cheat sheet in the description below or go to orpheusaudioacademy.com slash legal. All right, have a great day and keep creating.